Okay, I'm back again. This time with a little help for you guys who have old Windows XP or Windows 2000 laptops. Um, basically, you know, by now, basically your battery cells are dead, so you depend mostly on your AC adapter. But a lot of times, after your computer's about two or three years old, um, you start to notice your adapter gets loose and eventually stops working. That happened with this computer, and basically I did a small fix um, with basically a lighter and piping solder to uh, reconnect the AC adapter in the back to the motherboard. The only problem is, yes, it connects now, but if you move the computer or the AC cord, this is what happens. Basically, it shuts off. Um, your battery's no good anymore, so whatever you were doing, you lose your information. Um, the type of port these things commonly use is this little round adapter. It plugs into a little round port in the back with a stem in the middle. And basically, after a couple of years of using your computer, that little stem becomes loose and disconnects itself from the motherboard at either one or multiple uh, places. Um, basically, I'm just going to show you how to fix that. Um, the only tools you're going to need... Now, if you're like me, cheap and um, kind of broke, basically you can use a lighter and um, some piping solder which will kind of fix it like it did for mine, at least it connects now but uh, it won't be a permanent fix because it's not tight up with the motherboard which is the problem with it right now. Only thing you're going to need is a um, little soldering gun kit. I picked one up for eight dollars. Um, basically a soldering gun, some soldering paste, which I don't know if I'm going to use or not, and some small gauge solder. Uh, relatively cheap. Um, I would suggest getting a screwdriver with multiple bits on it um, just because you're going to probably need to take your computer down to the motherboard. Um, it's pretty simple but the only thing you need to do is remember um, what screws go where. Basically you can create a little sheet of paper with the labels of the screws. On the bottom of mine they mostly say R or P. Um, I basically just separate those, but there are some computers with five or six different types of screws, um, depending on what model you get. Uh, just for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm using a old Dell and Spiron 2200. Uh, came out in 2005. It's running Windows XP. 30 gig hard drive, 1.4 gigahertz, Intel Celeron M processor. It's a 14.1 inch screen. Um, had it for a while, never had to replace anything except for the AC adapter, um, which I did once before, like I said, to get it working, and now it's becoming worse. So I'm just going to go ahead and start soldering it, um, get into taking it apart right quick, and then I'll be right back. Okay, getting into the taking apart, uh, basically... Uh, either you can use plastic cups or bowls. I just have two deodorant caps here. Uh, there's basically only two different types of screws in this Dale. Uh, but for some, there are more. Um, just basically know what screws you're putting in there. Um, to start off, first, um, a lot of the common designs of these old laptops is um, the way the hinge for holding down the keyboard is um, designed. It's basically you turn the laptop over. Lift up both of these little connectors on the back. Okay. See if I'm in focus here. Um, and basically, lay the screen flat and pull up where it's loose. And basically, that releases you to get to um, your keyboard. On this model, uh, like I said, it's pretty scaled back. There aren't even any screws holding down the keyboard. It's just free to come off after you um, remove the little top case there. And you have to remove the ribbon cable. Um, a lot of models, even back then, had screws holding down the keyboard, but not this model. Uh, to remove the ribbon cable, basically move the keyboard back. Should be a little black tab here. You just lift that, and then it comes right out. And you set the keyboard aside. 
Okay, I removed the top aluminum plate, and basically what you see now is the inner workings of the computer. You have your wireless card, your modem, your fan, your heat sink for your microprocessor, and your video card. Um, the next step you need to do is remove the screen. Basically, this screen only had two screws holding it together in the back, in the same area that I showed you how to remove the top case. And um, I've already pre-removed those. And the only thing I have left to do is to find the wire coming from the video card and pull that straight out. You don't want to bend any of the uh, pins in there because it will be very hard to get out. And you also want to disconnect the antenna wire from the wireless card, which will be removed later. Okay, in order to save on time, I skipped quite a few steps and I did that mainly because your computer is probably not going to be exactly the same as far as taking it apart. Um, but three common areas that I can say are if you have an express car slot, basically you want to remove the tray that's in there and bend back the casing, removing the um, little pushing and thing. I forgot what it's called, but basically make sure that clears the case. Anything else is catching the case, such as the VGA adapter in the back. Um, most likely your motherboard is going to be held down by about four to five screws. Just make sure you remove those and separate them from any other screws um, from the computer just because they're going to be different lengths. And the third area is the processor. Basically, it has four screws holding it down and it holds down the motherboard to the bottom case. Basically, just loosen those screws, remove the wire from the fan, and it should lift right out, exposing the microprocessor. So, um, so I went ahead and soldered um, ahead. And as you can see, I am not a professional solder. Um, basically, if you're not a professional, you're going to have similar looking stuff. Um, I was kind of using the wrong tool. I really needed a precision tip soldering iron. If you have one of those, your work will be a lot better than mine. But uh, this also works. Basically, I just made the right connections, connected all the metal pieces that connect to the AC adapter, made sure that they weren't touching any other metal place. Even though it looks like there's globs of solder all over the place, these are just their own globs. They aren't touching any metal surface. Um, and just to make sure that it works, go ahead and grab the power adapter which is somewhere down here okay and you don't need the processor or anything in here you just plug the power adapter in and the first thing you look for is smoke if you see any smoke or hear any weird noises you have metal to metal contact which is not good as you can see my messy work actually is pretty good I mean no smoke yet well, let's see if it made contact. To see if it made contact, basically the only thing you have to do is remember where your power button is and your status lights are and press it. If you see lights on, that means you've done it right. Okay, as you can see, I've gotten it all back together. Um, nothing's on fire, thankfully. Um, the main important thing is that it works. You see I'm jiggling around the cord. Let me close this down for a second. I'm shaking the port, moving it around. Um, if I had done that before, it would have turned off instantly. Uh, but, yeah, as you can see, it's movable, and it doesn't shut off. Um, that's just showing how good the connection is. I don't think it worked even that good when it was brand new. Sometimes it would go on battery for about two seconds if I moved it around. Um, that was probably a problem from the factory, but... What they couldn't fix, I fixed for less than $20. With that, I'm out. Please leave a comment or, or a video response if you decided to fix your computer and you want to post that. Um, also, if you want to see this and more technology videos, subscribe to my channel. I'm out. Peace.